I, I personally feel that today is uh, this morning is a really a glad for me that uh, I'm able to connect uh, with the, so many people so, who are really interested to understand, interested to know about the uh, <clears throat> the subject on the bit, uh, you know, the transport, the transportation related subjects. Yeah, maybe uh, I mean it's a blend of the different uh, from the different backgrounds. So maybe I do not know to what extent my lecture would be uh, interesting for all of you. So nevertheless, at the very outset, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the Professor Ankit Kathuria and his team for taking up such a nice platform uh, through which uh, we all are, you know, come together and interacting and sharing our thought process. Yeah, first of all, my sincere request to all of you, uh, all of you is that please don't consider me as an expert. Yes, I am not an expert. I'm still learning and I'm uh, connecting, you know, to you all to uh, learn something more from you so that through this uh, platform, I'm able to connect uh, all of you and uh, we can have a good network in the future. And in that way, we can expand our, you know, the thought process for the betterment of our uh, research work. Anyways, thank you once again to all of you. Uh, <clears throat> the topic that I'm going to share with you uh, in this uh, one hour is on the recycling of bituminous pavement. Yeah. Sir, As sorry. we know. Sir, sorry to interrupt, sir. Can you just full screen it? Because it's uh, not on the full screen mode. My PPT? Yes, sir. Okay. Is yes. it okay now? It's okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sorry to bother. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you. So, <clears throat> yeah, I was telling you the talk that uh, I'm going to share with you in this uh, one and one and a half hours is on the recycling of bituminous pavements. As everyone knows, what is the bituminous pavement? What is recycling here in this uh, on the topic uh, that we are going to discuss uh, the, you know, have uh, two different terminology. One is recycling and one is of the bituminous pavements. When we talk about the, the pavements, right, uh, the bituminous pavement is a flexible pavement that we know. On top of the, the multiple layers, the bituminous course is laid on it to impart a good writing quality and also to act as a, a layer of waterproofing agent. Now the concern that today we have is the recycling. Why should we go for recycling? Why the recycling the word is appearing today in the highway construction industry regarding this also, you all know that. Mainly it is due to this shortage of deconstruction materials, particularly the good quality stone aggregates. Therefore, it's a very high time for all of us, especially the people who are closely associated in the highway construction industry and the scientists, professors, students who are closely associated with the, the transportation engineering in the areas of 
the materials, the pavements, and etc. Et so, <clears throat> uh, in my today's presentation, I shall be see, confining on the form bitumen reason being because see if we talk uh, about the recycling of the bituminous pavement, it's a very a vast topic. The recycling of bituminous pavement can be done in a very different um, different you know ways. So we that uh, we may not be able to cover it uh, each and every point. So for uh, a better you know understanding on the recycling of the bituminous pavements, I thought of the picking up uh, one of them, that is the form bitumen. So that would be discussed in the following slide. <clears throat> As we understand that the most preferred mode of transportation is, yeah, the road, through road. This is mainly due to the maximum flexibility uh, in the speed of travel, direction, route at the time. And also, we all understood that in India that it has a substantial road length in terms of the million kilometers of roads, which is which took the second position after the USA in the world. And once the road is constructed, as we know that this particular structure would be subject to detrimental forces emanating from the two primary sources that we know the one the first one is the environment and the second one is the traffic now both of them act continuously to reduce the writing quality and the structural integrity as a result in due course and over a period of time we have to improve the writing quality of the existing pavement, due to which we have to remove the, the distressed portions of the existing pavement. And in the process of this revamping, we have to again, you know, take out the, the distressed portion and then uh, repave with the fresh material or the same material that uh, which uh, that is being removed from the existing pavement is again recycled and repaved. That's a, that my the top of my talk would be you know in that uh, uh, session I'll be coming up. And the bad roads can be a cause for economic loss as well as the loss of the several lives that we understood. Therefore. <clears throat> First of all, that what we need to understand is the mechanism. What are the causes? What are the main causes by which the road, the life of the road is reducing? Then if we are able to figure out the problem, the factors which are affecting the life of the pavement, then it will be easier for us to nurture or to revamp the the you know the system or the the properties of the material so that that the composite that we intend to use would last for the design life now the role of the materials in the in the road infrastructure the project is tremendous the materials the properties plays a pivotal role that we all know, right? Now, <clears throat> even if we design a wonderful structure, a wonderful pavement section on paper, unless until we translate or implement this particular thought process on ground properly, it is not going to work. It is not going to work at all. Therefore, <clears throat> It is imperative for the highway engineer or for the 
the researchers or for the you know the, uh, the, uh, the builders who are closely associated in this particular field should understand well the importance of these materials selection materials properties and the requirements of these materials for the uh, you know the particular structure that we need to properly select so <clears throat> having said that the life of the bitumen is degrading day by day because the bitumen is a hydrocarbon materials once this particular substance comes in contact with the heat the, as we know that the bitumen melts and then this from this substance the oxid the oxid uh, the volatile substances would be evaporated on and the binding efficacy that the binding that the properties is going to gradually gradually it is going to loss which is the this process is called the, ox, the aging process the aging process is happening due to many factors right so that i i'm not going to explain it very elaborately but to understand better about the recycling the process somehow i just thought of sharing with you and then quickly i'll take you to the another slide so now the these phenomena are happening under the actions of the solar radiation effect and the moistures and as a result we have this frosty action right so now this <clears throat> the aging process is the main cause for you know deteriorating this bituminous pigment now in that case how do we how do we control this aging process how to retard see the aging process would take place this we cannot control 100% but we can retard it we can we can do something by which this aging process can be made slow down so in that way the life of the pavement can be enhanced at least for the design life during the design life the pavement doesn't fail now pavement recycling recycling of this bituminous ore is required when the existing pavement that the condition is not good enough for the riding on it if the riding quality is compromised or is affecting significantly then that particular road stretch is a good candidate for repair, either repairing repairing or maintenance or recycling or reconstruction depending upon the severity of the damage of the existing pavement so now the adequacy and the performance of the pavement is being judged based on that we know the fatigue life rutting life rutting and the thermal cracking and so on and so forth that we understood now since we are very much aware about this failure pattern and the main some of the main causes of these failures we know in that because of uh, you know then keeping this in mind we we should be able to control the this you know the factors which are influencing these uh, failures parameters now <clears throat> recycling of bituminous pavement is not limited to only bituminous cores it may so happen the layers which are built beneath the bituminous cores could also be failed could also be you know damaged so in that case 
what we have to do is, right, look, right from the beginning when we build a road, it is imperative for us to have a strong foundation. Now, from the strong foundation onwards, if we build a layer one after another in a proper manner, then the life of the pavement would last for at least the design life. Now, in that perspective, at the same time, what we need to understand is, yes, the construction methodology that we adopt should be a sustainable, you know, sustainable one. So I'm not going to explain what exactly the sustainability is that everyone understood in today's, uh, you know, in the present scenario, the importance of sustainability is very tremendous. So we have to, we have understood. So keeping this all factor in mind, we have to, you know, take up the Task, so that our, the purpose for which the task is taken up is served. Now, <clears throat> for example, if we look at, see, when shall we recycle this flexible pen? When shall we recycle this bituminous pen? Right. Now, this would, this is done only when the pavement structure, the existing pavement structure is not up to the mark. Now, when I say not up to the mark, means we have to have a threshold value, which uh, now, again, the, because the failure patterns we are measuring in terms of fatigue, you know, fatigue life, and we, we, we measure in terms of rutting, we, we, we measure in terms of determined crankings, right, and etc. Therefore, the rutting, now, if, having said that, the, if the road, the existing road has a longitudinal depression along the tire, you know, along, along the, uh, the tire impression, more than 20 mm, then that particular road section is considered to be rutted. Right. Now, if this rutting, the rutting depth of rut is more than 20 mm, then we consider that that particular pavement section is fail under the rutting failure. Then how to revamp it? How to, you know, again, you know, uh, make it all right so that the, the riding quality tomorrow, I have, you know, a fantastic one. So in that process, what we do is, now what we try to understand is, now this rutting may confine only to bituminous force. Or maybe this rutting may be one of the reasons from the, you know, the subgrade deformation or maybe from the subbase deformation that we need to figure it out properly. So now uh, to rule out the main, to rule out the main causes of this rutting, we again need the forensic investigations, a proper forensic investigation through which we shall be able to map the actual cause of the pavement failure, right? Now, if the pavement is, the rutting is happening within the bituminous course, that I think the, the, our, the task is quite simpler. Reason being that we can revamp the bituminous mix by redesigning the bituminous mix we can overcome this rutting problem. But if this problem still persists and, and it is not confining only on the bituminous course, which is again, which may be from the deformations of the subbase or the sub, subgrade layer, then in that case, the, you know, uh, what is a the the correction the methods to correct out that deformation or that payment distress would be different. So in that case, we may have to consider the performance of the entire layers of that payment crust. So depending upon the types of the failures, we have to now. Here, when I talk about the recycling of pavement, that is, I would say that it is the process in which 
the existing pavement materials are reclaimed and reused after reprocessing for the resurfacing or repaving, reconstruction, depending upon the needs of the pavement structure, we have to act on it. Now, the methods of reprocessing and treatment of the pavements, this would again depend on the types of failure that we are observing and the types of failure which is happening. So if the failure is only confining on the bituminous pores, then we have different you know, options. Like if we talk like this is the overview of the reclamations and the recla uh, recycling technique that I have uh, taken from IRC uh, 120. And this is the guidelines uh, for milling and recycling of the bituminous uh, course. So from this uh, you know, particular standard code, we could understand that the reclamation can be done in two process. Maybe, yes, it can be done in hot process and can be done by the cold process. And at the same time, the recycling can also be done in, in place, okay, in, in plan or in place and hot in place or cold in place or in, uh, and in plan, hot in plan and cold in plan. Right. And we can, this recycling can be taken up in, you know, hot mix condition or in the cold mix condition. And also this process, this thought process can be extended to the stabilization by adding some suitable chemical additives or commercially you know, uh, available patented products can be employed. And we can, again, think of stabilizing the existing materials and the same material can be reused and repaved then and there and without much, you know, worrying for pro, uh, importing new materials from the far distance, we would be able to construct the roads, okay, in a very, uh, with a low, uh, you know, environmental impact and with the, you know, very in economical way. That also can be done. And now one of the, the emerging technology and one of the, you know, I, that uh, the technology, which I'm going to explain today is the form bitumen. Now, the form bitumen is uh, one of the uh, option uh, it is, uh, which is available for recycling or reclaiming of the existing bituminous cores. Now, in this process, the form bitumen, we can use uh, bitumen or emulsion, right? So now emulsion bitumen, they are the binders. Basically, what happening is in the bituminous uh, courses bituminous mixture. Now, the majority of the ingredients is aggregates, right? Now, aggregates, they are to be bound together. Now, this binding, the binding property would be imparted by this either emulsion or bitumen, right? So, they are binder, basically. Now, basically, now, the the main concern or the, the main, you know, the strength and the durability would be imparted by the aggregate skeleton. Now, the role of binder is just to give a, you know, property of adhesive through which these mineral aggregates are bind together. They are bind together to form a composite, right, that we all know. So, the point here is when we do the recycling of any materials, it is very important for us to understand how closely these aggregate skeletons could be interlocked. If we could configure, you know, a best degree of interlocking, then with the minimum quantity of binder, we would be able to manufacture a good composites or a good bituminous mixture. This we have to understand. 
unless until we achieve or unless until the mix is arrived at a good degree of interlocking, I would say even if we use the best of the best adhesive, okay, as in that the bonding that we the desired degree of bonding that we supposed to have might not be able to achieve it. Therefore, the first and foremost thing that we need to focus while you know recycling the any materials is that we should try to formulate the different ingredients okay to have a good packing density if the, this packing density is properly you know configured properly you know designed then i would say the rest 70 to 75 percent of your task is already achieved and the rest of the only 20 to 25 percent would be taken care by the binder that's how we have to look at now <clears throat> As I told you that today, my lecture would be mainly based on the form determinant technology, though we have different methods for recycling of this bituminous force. Okay. Why this technology is famous, becoming famous recently? Despite the this thought process was already you know invented in the in the way back 1956 by the professor ladies Chani from the Loa State University, who was the first person to recognize the suitability of form bitumen for use as in the binding resin. Okay, you must be wondering. Now, this technology was, though it was already invented in the year of 1956, but this was, this technology was, you know, later refined by the mobile oil. And, the, and also, and now this mobile oil, they did not have a proper, you know, the protocol, a proper design process to come up and to share and to disseminate across the construction industry. So as a result of which, now this uh, particular technology is becoming famous in the recent time. So now gradually this mobile oil developed the first expansion chamber later in which the bitumen was mixed with water to produce a bitumen form. Now, bitumen form, what exactly the form is the form bitumen? In the very, as a layman, if I explain, then the form bitumen is nothing. It is, you know, a bitumen when the bitumen is injected, okay? With, in, in, with a, in a very high pressure, by maintaining a temperature of around 160 to 180 degrees Celsius. Okay, when simultaneously when the water is injected and this bitumen is under a high pressure when it's injected, then the volume of this bitumen expanded. Now, during this expansion process, what happening is the surface area of this material is uh, enormous, very significant. And in during that period, without giving any heat on aggregates. This particular binder could coat the aggregates, the peripheral area, so which could properly coat, okay, depending upon the volume of the expansions of this bitumen in presence of water. Generally around two to five persons of bitumen, okay, two, two to five persons of water is present. So now this expansion, the expansion of bitumen, okay, is very important 
And the, in the form technology, the important is again, the important parameter is again the half life. The expansions of this bitumen shall be greater than you know, 50. And uh, another important parameter of this technology is again the half life. The half life is defined as the time it takes for the form bitumen to reduce by 50% from its maximum achieved volume. The half-life should be more than at least 10 seconds. So during that process, during that duration, the aggregate should be able to copy. That's how. So the bitumen form technology works. Now, <clears throat> as I explained briefly now, so the form bitumen is nothing. It is a mixture of a very hot bitumen and water. And it is produced by injecting water into hot bitumen, one, maintaining the temperature between 160 to 180 degrees Celsius, and which is supported by the air. The volume of water is between two to five percent of the volume of the bitumen. And when the water contacts the hot bitumen, it it changes to the steam and the volume of bitumen expands, you know, many times, as I said, at least 15 times. So in this stage, the form bitumen is produced. It contains thousands of bitumen bubbles and then it's ready to mix with aggregate without giving any temperature. Now the mechanism, the methodology that we employ in the field while recycling, while you know, yeah, recycling the uh, bituminous courses in, in situ. Okay. Like initially, we must determine in the laboratory first, the first and foremost thing that we need to do is we need to map the doses of the additives that we intend to add. Because when we do the recycling, what we need to do is, first of all, we have to demolish. We need to crush down the wood lumps or the pavement portion, that particularly the bituminous layer. Then we crush it down, pulverize it, right? Once this, we need to have the proper pulverization process. And then what? Once the pulverization is done, then this admixing of these additives is required. Now, once the admixing of this additive is done in the dry form, then we have to again add to water moisture so that this, when this the additives and the moisture comes in uh, comes in contact, some the chemical hydrations would take place because the additives normally uh, usually that we use is either lime or cement. Or yes, of course, there are uh, co you know commercially patented products in the market. Okay, that that can also be employed, but usually that in the conventional you know and our traditional you know uh, method of construction, if you look at in that perspective, that lime or cement is are being used. So therefore, now what we do is. Now, to, to understand the working principle in coal in place recycling process, what we need is, is the lime or cement would be, first of all, spread across the carriageway where we intend to take up the recycling process. Then we have, you know, that the machinery, that there uh, dep depending upon the quantums of the work, the size of the machineries would also accordingly select. Now, the machinery, this machinery, I just like to show you here. This kind of machinery is available in the market. Even in India, we are employing this kind of machinery. I'll go back here. So it has a proper, you know, the arrangements to, by which the bituminous course that the thickness, the only, the support, only the limited thickness of the bituminous force, say for example, the bituminous force 150 mm thick, to that, only to that, the, the, under the control condition, 
control milling condition, control you know crushing condition. That thickness would be crushed and uh, mixed and pulverized, and the moisture would be added, and then the compaction would be carried out, and then immediately after some time that the pavement surface is ready for the traffic movement. This is how this technology, uh, you know, the offer the advantages. Now the pulverizing of the existing pavement crust could be done in the, you know in this manner. So all distressed pavement crust would be you know uh, sawn off and then pulverized. Then simultaneously the the mixing of uh, spreading of this lime or the cement would be carried out, and then proper mixing has to be ensured and followed by the watering in order to achieve the optimum moisture content. And of course, the binder may be in the form of like the emulsion. Emulsion as a binder can be add on depending upon the requirements of the job. And in that way, the after proper uh, ensuring the proper mixing, the compaction can be done. And thereafter, then the pavement surface can be open to traffic temporarily. Then, yes, of course, after this uh, layer, and it is imperative to have, uh, uh, I would say, a good uh, bituminous course on top of it to serve as a uh, waterproofing agent and also to uh, facilitate uh, a good riding quality. So now this is how, this is one of the process, one of the you know option that we have in coal in place recycling and <clears throat> the coal in place recycling is considered to be an attractive alternative of rehabilitation nowadays because of its economic and environmental advantages. Then another main need of the coal in place recycling process is that the material in the existing distressed growth pavement is simultaneously recycled and mixed with the stabilizing agent. Enabling the road pavements to be strengthened without the need of, to import expensive aggregates. So, the other benefits include a shorter construction period as well as significant improvements to traffic safety. These needs add up to significantly lower unit costs for road rehabilitation compared to other methods. <clears throat> also, the, this particular technology makes Use of existing materials requiring a small quantity of additives or binding agent to be added. The reclaimed construction materials are fully reused. So, in that way, very few virgin aggregates would be required for providing additional bituminous cores on top of this layer, as I said a little while ago, to maintain the riding quality of the pavement. And in addition, the fast pace method minimizes space requirements and environmentally harmful disruption to traffic. So, <clears throat> when, what are, uh, you know, what kind of, uh, uh, let me put it in this way, how do we select the right candidate for rehabilitation or recycling of the uh, pavement is uh, to be done? Therefore, now, in that in that perspective, if you look at yes, the pavement failures would the pavement failures takes place in the different patterns in different manners. So, depending upon the the failures, uh, depending upon the you know degree of failures of the existing pavement, we have to take a call. Maybe if it is a you know the existing pavements uh, have a minor crack. Then, for, in such case, the crack ceiling would be the best uh, testing option. But uh, from this slide, if you look at this kind of failure, pavement failure is fatigue cracking, uh, which is uh, very severe in nature. And this is this kind of pavement sections are the right candidate for uh, taking up the recycling. This uh, we, we would not uh, even if we uh, you know suggest for crack ceiling that it is not going to work at all in such a, you know, this, I would say it's a very, you know, dire situation 
So the this is the right candidate for the recycling of the uh, you know the bituminous cores. We can remove the bituminous cores and then relate the this thing, the pavement section to improve the riding quality, provided the foundation of the pavement system should be strong enough that we need to ensure it. If the foundation, the rutting or this cracking is happening due to the uh, the layers which are lying underneath, then in that case, we may have to revamp those layers as well. <clears throat> There are several, uh, the same, the failure patterns we can discuss that. So uh, I, I will not be discussing all those uh, distinct distresses. There are slippage breaking. Why slippage uh, breaking is happening? Maybe due to the lack of binding with the lower layer, the proper bonding was not there because of which, uh, you know, this kind of uh, distress might happen. And in such cases, again, yes, we have only the option available is the removal of the distressed existing portions and we need to revamp by laying a fresh material or the same material you know, in a very similar fashion that we discussed right now that we can employ. And this kind of uh, milling machine is employed for, removal, for removing the existing asphalt course. Now, the beauty of this kind of uh, the machinery, this milling machine is that uh, we can precisely remove the bituminous top layer. Say, if we want to chop out only the 40 mm bituminous cores, that, also, that can also be done. Or if you want to uh, remove you know, up to 150, so that can also be done. So what I'm trying to say is that now in today's, you know, in the today's market, we have uh, you know the, the technology, machineries, the uh, you know by which uh, we can uh, you know perform a proper you know a maintenance of the pavement system. <clears throat> this is uh, one of the example how the test pits is done at site for collecting the materials for the testing. This is the gradations recommended by the IRC 37 2018. Now I had written here 2012, but in that case, in the latest one, 2018. So, see, what happening is why I'm sharing this segregation because, as I told you that the performance of mix depends on the aggregate skeleton. So these aggregate skeletons, we need to ensure that this, this different six sizes and then the percentage passing. We have this the main motive behind having the different sizes and the percentage passing are to ensure that when these different sizes of materials are blend together, that the minimum degree of interlocking is ensured so that the mechanical as well as the durability properties of the composite is, yeah, the composite is achieved as per the desired specifications. Now, in form bitumen technology, what we try to do is we try to understand the uh, indirect tensile strength, right? So we need to, we try to evaluate the mechanical and durability properties of the composite. Now this is done by a, performing a very simple test by modified Proctor test. In, by this, uh, mod, Proctor from this Proctor modified uh, proctor, uh, modified proctor test, we would be able to uh, achieve, uh, obtain the maximum dry density and optimal moisture content. And by ensuring the, you know, that the binder, that uh, minimum, that the binding property, which it should have in the uh, form uh, bitumen. Now, from this exercise, we would be able to map the Require water, the amount of water to be admits to ensure the optimum moisture content because this optimum moisture content would ensure the workability of the mixture. And the workability of the mixture is again important for ensuring proper compaction. And the proper compaction is again important to 
uh, achieve a good degree of compaction and a good degree of compactness. If that good degree of compactness is not achieved, then the air voids will be very, you know, uh, what do you call uh, substantial as a result of which that particular the pavement structure might compromise in the durability aspect. So they are uh, interrelated. These parameters are very you know, interrelated to each other. So we have to have a good control on it. So this is uh, the, uh, I will say, portable form plan that through which we can do the mix design in the laboratory. And from this mix design, we decide the, what amount of bitumen, what amount of water, what amount of wrap, reclaimed asphalt pavement uh, materials are to be added. And uh, we try to map the expansion ratio, then half-life. So all the, uh, the credential of the, the, you know, the technology would be evaluated here. And after the proper calibration validations in the laboratory, then this particular technology can be taken to the site for the larger, uh, you know, uh, the scale construction. This is how we do. And most of you must be knowing and you must be working on uh, this technology. I, I, I know that. But yes, uh, this particular uh, technology, uh, I would say that is a, a very environmental friendly and also very versatile. And nowadays, uh, this uh, technology is becoming famous because it is a coal mix technology, right? Without giving much of the, you know, the consuming the energy, giving energy, we are able to construct a road uh, in that way because of which uh, it's, uh, it is considered to be uh, very uh, uh, good technology. So one of my research scholars, uh, we see it on this particular topic. So he is uh, uh, trying to prepare the Marshall mode and through which uh, he is going to find out the ideas and then try to evaluate the potential of the form uh, Now, Now, <clears throat> the parameters which are to be considered in the design of bituminous uh, stabilized materials are like, as I said, maximum dry density is important and optimum moisture contained. And yes, at the same time, we need to uh, uh, ensure that the material passing four to five micron is non-plastic. And yes, the type of bitumen, the binder that we use should be properly uh, tested and Normally, for this kind of technology, we prefer to use VZ, either VZ10 or VZ30. And in, upon, uh, in addition to that, the filler types like cement uh, or the lime are recommended. The cement or lime would enhance the stiffness property of the mixture by large. Then the important that the test parameters, uh, which are considered to be uh, very uh, significantly uh, you know, used for, uh, for, uh, in deciding the performance of the, this technology is the ITS. So in the ITS is conducted in the dry as well as in the wet form. So now this ITS, the TSR versus susceptibility is evaluated by preparing a Marshall mold Okay. Uh, to determine the weight and size strength, and the another set of the Marshall mold would be prepared to test, in, uh, and the test would be conducted in the dry uh, tensile dry condition to map as a dry tensile strength. So the ratio of weight and size strength and the dry tensile strength is the, the moisture susceptibility okay, tensile strength ratio. This is how the minimum that strength the recommended for the ITS dry at 25 degrees Celsius is 225 kPa and for the wet it is 100 kPa. Now this is a brief like alignment of machines 
this is how in the larger scale depending upon the magnitudes of the projects so in the larger scale this kind of machineries uh, are employed in the projects and the you know, cement a line spreader we have and the pre spreader line and cement on the payment track and then the recycler comes and the recycler uh, would uh, recycle the materials and then the pulverizing and spray and the watering would be done and followed by the rolling activity if there is any uh, unevenness on surface then the, this particular graders would uh, revamp the surface and even this one and then final compaction can be done by the the bond this is how the construction process is <clears throat> now these are the some of the advantages of coal in place recycling using from the timber technology and it is it has already proven that in the excellent mixing of in situ materials with the new aggregates or stabilizing agents and the additions of water and fluid stabilizing agent is electronically controlled and spread across the full width of the milling drum through a series of nozzles and one set the depth of cut of the milling drum is controlled with sensors ensuring accurate controls of layer thickness the entire process can be carried out with the recycler on the half of the rod width depending upon the width of the uh, this thing the carriage way of the existing rod and depending upon the traffic so accordingly that customization can be done without uh, hampering much the movement of the traffic and if by this methods uh, it's improved the mechanical quality of the local rod construction soil and also improve the structural integrity and also facilitates to utilize 100% of the in situ materials and high milling and machine performance regardless of the working there and ease in transportation that is ensured and ability of the recycler to construct the layer of the stabilized materials is uh, uh, doable and yes energy conservation is tremendous and the, the badly distressed pavement is transformed into a stronger nice looking pavement so this is how uh, the thought process uh, pertaining to pump technology I is supposed to share with you today. Uh, I personally feel that my lecture was a little bit boring today. Uh, I personally felt that I was uh, I was not involving much, uh, uh, you know, myself and the audience because uh, somehow I consider that uh, I'm not, uh, you know, able to connect with the participants properly. It seems like today I feel like that. Professor Ki? Yes, sir. So we. Audible. I did not know uh, how much time do I have? So, so you, we have uh, some time. If you wish, we can, uh, you know, uh, take some questions from the participants. If, uh, or, or do you need some time for the presentation? That is also fine, sir. We have 23 minutes in hand. Yeah, so that's fine. That's fine. So, uh, Prof, Professor Ankit, uh, in fact, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> see, uh, I, I would like to... Um, do, do I have for five, ten minutes? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you. See, uh, the audience, uh, the lectures should be useful for the audience. Okay, so now what I'm trying to tell you is what I'm trying to uh, convey my message to the audience is that my the young research scholars, the young, uh, you know, uh, what do you call the, um, the opportunity seekers now, they are seeking the opportunity to do research. Okay, for them, uh, my lecture was uh, quite slow, and, and uh, uh, the topic that I have chosen is a little bit uh, again, you know, uh, off track time. Okay, so now what I'm trying to tell you, let me sum up. Okay, now see the what we have to understand is the importance of the construction materials okay my dear friends now in this construction material the importance of the construction material is that now see 
we whenever we select a materials for the construction purpose okay it is imperative for us to judge the suitability of the material for that particular what structure okay now when i say recycling the recycling of course that we understand if i said recycling means i am again reusing the inferior quality materials for what the constructions of the pavement or some any you know like you know the concrete structure or any other you know civil engineering structure now being a material engineer okay what we supposed to understand is yes what are the properties which are influencing which are affecting the properties of the composite that we first of all need to figure it out okay see dear friends we are bound to be more sophisticated than the doctors who sit in the hospitals okay i always say this to my students the reason being because now when we picked up any materials which is of you know inferior in quality okay see now recycling we talk recycling recycling is work we are reusing the materials which have already been you know subjected to uh, you know under a, a, a highly dynamic uh, loading conditions or in the first where you know weather conditions okay now having said that these materials could be again reemployed if we reprocess properly now in that in that process the important thing that we need to do is what well, we need to figure out the what what is that what are the lacks in it okay what what would be the lack yes we the um, most of the time we gave more emphasis on the mechanical property yes of course mechanical property is important but now in such a uh, circumstances durability property is rather important than the mechanical property okay so how to you know the how to uh, uh reconfigure okay how to reconfigure this property and how to readdress refresh regain this property okay in such a way that the structure which i need to be when i build by this you know recycling employing this recycling material should be able to withstand the you know oncoming wind loads okay and should be able to you know uh, what you call uh, should be able to provide a sustainable mode of you know that the construction that right so what i am trying to tell you here is we have to be more uh, you know uh, sophisticated in terms of the specification okay if you want to be a good engineer good material engineer or a good highway engineer yes we have to be very strong in the specification right like see a doctor who sits in the hospital what happened when i am not well what i approach the doctor and i you know reveal out what whatever you know the problem i have okay and he is going to note it down according to his uh, treatment protocol he is going to finally what he is going to pronounce out that yes these are the medicines you can try okay maybe it's a viral okay and now you see me after three days but they have a chance they have the opportunity to call you back but for us we don't have that opportunity and for us we the our patient that you know or that material that aggregates for example this is an aggregate okay that this will not respond to you this will not reciprocate you you know when i cannot act i cannot talk with him okay with this materials right so what we need to do is we have to be more sophisticated we have to feel it we have to you know if you you have to involve in it and you have to clearly look at observe you observe we have our observation should be much 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 sophisticated than the doctors who sit in the hospital because my patient is loaded i only have to take care of everything right so now this aggregate won't say that i have this percentage of porosity okay i have cracks around here it's not going to indicate you it's not going to hint you right you we are the one who has to detect all this flaws right therefore what i'm trying to tell you is see 
Now, in the construction, in today's, uh, considering the present scenario, we do not have enough quantity of a good quality of construction, good quality, you know, construction materials. Therefore, there is a huge gap between the demand and supply of these construction materials. Now, in order to offset, to, you know, narrow down this, to bridge this gap, what we are trying to do is we are trying to employ a materials which are available in the local area in abundant quantity. So when I say the materials which are available in the local area means what? That material would be obviously inferior to the what? The conventional good quality aggregates, right? Now, now we have been told that you have to complete this project, okay? Then also at the same time you said now the NGT. National Green Tribunals have, you know, shut down all the queries, from queries, borough areas. No, you cannot open up queries now, no borough areas, right? Okay. Now, but at the same time, they said you have to meet out this requirement. You have to complete this, uh, you know, infrastructure projects. Okay. Now, how do we do that? Yes, the, that's what the challenge that we have today, uh, the, you know, are really in a very, uh, what do you call, uh, a very, very, uh, what do you call, serious, right? So how do we do, how do we take care of it? That's what, customization, right? Now we have to customize our materials, okay? In what manner? That's the, yeah, that's the thought process. That, that's the, you know, the gray area for the research, right? So now this message, especially for the youngsters who are participating in this uh, lecture. Now we have to think, now, from now on, we have to work. We have to, you know, uh, get ready our future. In, when I say in the future, like the innovative materials, right? Now, we have to think for non-conventional materials. The con because the conventional materials is now exhausting. It's now almost exhausted, right? So, what we need to do is, at this juncture, we need to figure out the possible way out through which these non-conventional materials can be, you know, can be uh, evaluated for, judi evaluated judiciously for the constructions of this infrastructure, right? So in that process, uh, we need to look at, look at uh, Kinley. Therefore, now the, the lecture today, uh, I, took out, uh, I share with you, uh, might not be directly useful for you, but the idea behind to uh, share my thought process uh, was, we have to now, you know, venture out uh, a proper, you know, the proper uh, thought process and, uh, and the identifications of some, you know, non-existence, non-existing, you know, materials, non-conventional materials and some, you know, the new thought process needs to be brought into, okay. So that uh, to, for tomorrow's, okay, for the tomorrow's requirements, we are able to do something from now on. That's the message I, want to, I wanted to share with you, uh, the, you know, young, that, uh, young participants today. So with these few words, I would like to culminate my talk out here. Thank you very much, Professor Anki, once again, and to your team for giving me this opportunity to interact with the uh, participants. And if there are queries, uh, I'll be more than happy to address if I understood. If I'm not able to understand, then I, I can come back later. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, sir, for a very wonderful lecture. Yes, sir, there are a few uh, questions from the participants and they have written it in the chat box. If you allow me, I can read it for you. Yeah, please. So, so the first question is from uh, Saranya Ullas. Uh, the question is, sir, is there any standard procedure for stabilizing recycled materials of existing granular layers? Okay. Existing granular layer. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> see, when we talk about the recycling of the granular layer, see, now depends what is the crust thickness of the pavement. And the granular layer, when you talk about the granular layer, I would say, you see, it's an unbound layer, okay? 
GSB is a granular layer, unbound layer. WMM is also a granular layer, unbound layer. Okay. And DBM is also a granular layer, but it's a bound layer. Bituminous cores, then the, you know, BC, we said, you know, bituminous concrete is also a granular layer, but it is a bound layer. Okay. Now, what I could uh, understand from her query is the granular layer and bound layer. Now, depending upon the thickness of the crust, we have to take a call. Now, the machinery that we have in the market. Okay, for full depth recycling, for re reclamation, it's limited to somewhere 450 mm, not from top. Now, if the BC layer thickness is, let's say, for example, 50 mm, DBM is 150, WMM is, uh, suppose, 100 mm, then now that the granular layer, w, uh, the GSB is, like say, for 100 mm. Now, in that case, if this crust thickness is within the 450 mm, then the reclamation as a whole can be done, but only that the granular layer, the underlying layer would not be able to, you know, uh, what you call, uh, would not be able to revamp. Reason being, we cannot lift up the layer and we cannot get inside, you know, and then we cannot do anything. That one drawback is there. Okay. So in what I could understand the, from her question is that, yes, Full depth reclamation is possible. That we can do. Okay, sir. So I'll move to the next participant question. Uh, uh, the question is by Dr. Atul. So the question is, sir, at what layer waste plastic can be you best utilized in flexible payment? I mean, the question in which layer, I think, the waste plastic can be best utilized in flexible payment? Yeah. Uh, see. The plastic waste can, yeah, you, uh, you said so this plastic waste can be done again in many, you know, ways. One is by simply shredding and size down the, you know, the, the materials and it can be mixed with the granular layer and bound layer, okay? And can also even try, it can be used in the bound courses also. This is one way out because they, that in that case, this uh, shredded material would act as a fiber. In the form of fiber, it would, you know, uh, like kind of geometric, okay, reinforcement. So, and then by, you know, uh, mixing in the bitumen binder to, to modify the rheological properties of the binder, we can admix this uh, we can either convert it in the form of powder or it can be melted. So in that way, in such a way that this particular substance is admixed properly with the binder and the change in the rheological properties can be examined. And yes, being a plastic, if this plastic is added, admixed in the binder, base binder, then the, uh, what we call the, uh, stiffness property is going to enhance and uh, but the elasticity property would not be changed it would change it would not be changed in the sense it is not going to improve it would be affecting but it would not improve the elasticity property the stiffness property the hardness property would improve because it is plastic plastomer had it been elastomer then the elasticity property of the bitumen, you know, could have been improved. So now, depending upon the, the you know, depending upon the requirements, we have to take account. So the, I, I, I feel, I, I don't know, I'm addressing his query or not. So this is how, as far as the utilization of the waste plastic is concerned. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, if you allow me, there is one more uh, question from uh, Mr. Hari Krishna. Uh, the question is, can we use recycled bitumen coated aggregate in cement concrete rigid payment? Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. And yes, uh, who is that gentleman? So it's Hari Krishna, D. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Yeah, it's a very good question. Hari Krishna. Yeah, uh, I would say yes. We are uh, IAT Roorkee, Transportation Engineering Group is pioneered in this technology. Okay, my research group is uh, 
uh, working on this particular technology and we are uh, quite successful in uh, uh, you know addressing this issue yes earlier you know we had a lot of challenges now we have overcome the challenges now and uh, we have a very good uh, this thing uh, what we call uh, the the thought process uh, the positive thought process pertaining to utilization of rad material for the um, formulations of concrete mix for the constructions of cement concrete pavement now uh, after you know seeing our performance the ministry of road transport highways uh, you know is very impressive and they came forward and then they offered themselves uh, you know a project a sponsored research project with us and now we are going to come up in the national highway project in the larger scale so thank you thank you for putting across this question uh, so there's just one last question now and i think we'll not be taking more questions after this but so the last question is what is the minimum percentage of lime uh, required for stabilized sub base layer i think okay uh see uh, it is a very tricky kind of question now what is the minimum percentage when when uh, you know the someone asks me minimum percentage it is very difficult to you know address directly reason b lime content cement content depends on the percentage of fines and fines you know contain in that particular mixtures because lime is what well, is lime is a chemical additives now unless until fines there is a substantial amount of fines in that particular mixture this lime or cement is not going to be active okay is not going to react much so now if we have to you know take the optimum chemical reaction from this lime then at least 75 micron passing material okay that should have at least you know 5 to 6 person uh, in that particular mixture then only the additions of admixing of lime or cement would be beneficial otherwise it would be almost i would say redundant okay so uh, probably you know i have uh, answered this question yes sir yes sir so sir i think uh, this is all uh, questions from audience 